the Society for the Prevention of Unwholesome Diet, SPUD. And the Society was apparently formed to stop people eating it. SPUD is not any corruption of the word potato or anything, so it may well be true. When the potato was introduced way back in 1586, it was considered to be food for animals. The genome of the potato has been sequenced. It's the sequence of genes which code for all of the different traits which a potato plant has. We can now look at those individual genes and we can uh, pinpoint them, which makes it a lot easier to uh, breed new potato varieties. That's a seed pod of a, of a potato. But inside that is the actual true seed of a potato. Anyone can have a crack at plant breeding, you know, by growing out these seeds and producing new varieties. I've named three varieties that I think we've bred and I call them after my, one after my sister and, and the other two after my two daughters, um, Susan, Autumn and Holly. We can view it as a sort of a polarity. We're talking about the rural poor, the potato is the sole ingredient and particularly the sole ingredient when you're coming to the famine years where it's simply boiled over the open fire and taken with things like buttermilk salted water, salted pepper. At the other end of the spectrum, particularly in affluent circles, the potato is but one ingredient. The potato is treated with flamboyance. It produces very sophisticated, refined dishes, potato pies and potato puddings. Well, I suppose we tend to think of potatoes really as savoury things, don't you? And today I ate a chocolate-flavoured cake with potatoes in it, and it was absolutely gorgeous. It was really lovely. That was a strange thing to make for potatoes, I felt. Thank you.